Hello, I'm Susanna Grieger. I'm a karmic astrologer. Very early on, I saw strange things. I experienced things in the corner when there was dark. And actually, uh, kids are usually scared of the dark, and I never was. I was fascinated. The moment we switched off the light, the whole room was filled with entities, and I talked to them, and I enjoyed it. And uh, later on, uh, around four or five years of age, I realized that I can sense people's auras and whether they are ill or not. And I could even sense death, that they're going to die, which is quite scary because I was a very outspoken kid. And I, I told everyone, you know, be careful, you're going to die. Think about it. This was not a very nice thing to say, but who cares? And uh, um, I remember distinctly, I must have been about 10 years old, when my mom, who was very much interested in astrology, she uh, gave me uh, my horoscope. It was uh, a hand written horoscope and ha uh, there were no computers at that time and um, sh I looked at it and I said well this is not mine I don't think it's mine and my mom explained that I was a cesarean and of course she was put to sleep and uh, operated on and um, she asked uh, one of the assistants to um, to note to jot down the, the exact time I was born and of course, uh, I, um, you know, at that time, uh, people were given not just anesthesia, but, you know, some, some sleeping aid. So the baby was asleep as well. So I was taken out of her womb, but I wouldn't cry. And then they were trying to slap me and all kinds of things. And, and uh, much later on, I realized that, in fact, I was born 12 minutes after she thought I was born, which meant that the horoscope um, the, the, the picture of the horoscope I saw wasn't really mine. And what's on top of this, uh, the German astrologer, I was born in Germany, the German astrologer didn't believe in the, the, uh, the existence of Pluto. And so she didn't put Pluto on my ascendant. So of course it wasn't mine. But I, I even without, without knowing anything about astrology, I, I just looked at it and I said, this is not mine. And this is a very distinct moment because I understood what I saw and I knew instinctively that it's not mine. I can't describe you the feeling, but it was this very, very profound sense of, I know this, I know this, I must do this if I know this, right? Uh, so then came the, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, period when I was searching. And of course, in, in communist Hungary, um, this type of knowledge was clandestine, so you didn't really have books or anything. So you needed to um, to uh, smuggle books in from abroad. And this is how I started this, uh, learning astrology. First of all, if you want to know what the difference is between um, so-called traditional and karmic astrology, you need to understand one very important fact, that astrology has always been with us. Only in the last 300 years was it made out to be something strange or something unreal. Astrology has been very, very real. It was part of life. So in uh, Roman Christian Catholic times, uh, only those um, occult knowledges were able to survive, that kind of accepted uh, the Roman Christian doctrines. And uh, traditional astrology is very much linked to those, that you have one life, uh, that you um, have to die at the end uh, of it, that um, then you, you might go to purgatory, uh, burn there for a couple of thousand years, and maybe then, if you were good enough, then you can go to heaven. So everything is predetermined, and no matter what you do, it is only God who can decide what's happening to you. Traditional astrology is very much based on this. This is your birth chart. These are the traits you're coming in with. This is what you must do. If you don't do it, you will get punished. Um, whereas karmic astrology is very, very different, and it differs in two main things. Number one, there's no compulsory karma. This is something that no one understands because, you know, there's so much uh, negativity and so much scary uh, um, 
idea or ideology linked to karma that everyone thinks that you need to do it. No, you need to understand it. And then you need to decide what you're going to do with it. Whether you're going to redo it, try to resolve it, or let go. You can always let go. My master, Judy Hall, says that there is a karma of grace, which means you can hold up your hands and you can say, I'm sorry, I can't do anything. There's nothing I can do about this. I don't want to, to put more energy into it. So this is very important. So when I look at the birth chart and I look into the karmic layers, I can tell what your karma is and I can tell how to resolve it or how to let it go. Number two, the solar system is not what we used to learn at school. Uh, it doesn't look like that. There used to be a planet between Mars and Jupiter which got blown up about 12,000 years ago. And uh, the, remain, the, the, the remains of this uh, blown up planet it has formed the um, so-called asteroid belt. There are about 300,000 asteroids, out of which about 20,000 are, are named. And if you give something a name, you give it a destiny. And that destiny is going to be reflected back to you, which means that it has a meaning and uh, it will explain certain things about you. And then there is another um, uh, belt uh, uh, at the edge of the solar system, it's called the Kuiper Belt. This is where the trans-Neptunian objects, tr uh, centaurs, plutinos, TNOs, SDOs, whatever layer uh, you put there, I usually use the label uh, centaurs. They are responsible for your karmic wounds and they are, um, Going, going to tell you what you have learned through pain, through suffering uh, in previous incarnations. And uh, it will also tell you uh, what to do about them. I teach in two main cities. Uh, number one is Budapest, uh, which is uh, uh, my main residence at the moment and I teach at Clearbrook um, College of Higher Education and uh, Transcendental Knowledge and uh, Alternative uh, Medicine. It used to be accredited uh, and we um, put together a very interesting curriculum in which we teach numerology, astrology, um, tarot and all kinds of other uh, interesting subjects. And I also teach in London. I used to teach for London School of Astrology. Uh, I no longer do because I have my own groups and I, I, um, I, uh, I, that's what I do usually. My clients come from everywhere. Obviously most of my clients come from either London or Budapest. But since I do uh, chart reading via Skype, uh, really, you know, I had, I had clients from New Zealand, from California, um, even from Russia actually a couple of people from Russia. So um, whoever is interested in comic astrology usually finds me. So for a long time I was doing charts simply, you know, for family members and for friends. Um, and I, you know, I was otherwise occupied. I had, I had a first son, then I was building a family home. I started to work. And astrology uh, was always there. Uh, but kind of in the background. And then um, in back in 1982 or 83, uh, my brother, my only brother, my kid brother, he was four years younger, decided to leave the country and immigrate to the United States. And we threw a party for him. And we, we did a couple of, you know, we had a couple of drinks, obviously. Um, and uh, his girlfriend at that time uh, went to my desk and saw these hand uh, written horoscopes and one was my brother's and she looked at it and she wow this is Frank's uh, birth chart uh, can you tell me something about him and presumably I don't remember this but this girl later on told me that I said he will die as your life force is flowing away from his body and in 1995 as he was murdered this is exactly how he died and I didn't remember the episode at that point, but this girl searched me out uh, about a half a year later when this happened. And um, she requested a meeting with me and we had coffee and she explained, she told me the whole story. And I went home 
and I took his chart out of the folder. I looked at it and I saw immediately again uh, what I must have seen then. And then I, I, I realized that, you know what, if I saw this after really very, very little learning, very little knowledge of astrology, if, if this type of intuition came so sharply and immediately, uh, like a message that maybe this is what I need to do that th maybe this is what I should do for a living if I could help other people see things that they don't see by themselves uh, then maybe I can I, I can make a difference in their lives I have always been a very conscious person uh, maybe because my uh, um, moon phase at birth is crescent moon which is about changing things and being uh, very much aware of your mistakes uh, I kept going back to myself and scolding myself for th certain things that I did in the past I, I used to say that every half a year I started to be ashamed of things that I did uh, and uh, this made me very much aware of uh, things that are not just on the human ordinary tangible level uh, but I started to look behind things and as I said, you know, when I was very very young I saw things in the corner when it was dark. I could talk to entities This faded when I became a teenager, but then with astrology it came back and so astrology wasn't even enough uh, First of all normal traditional astrology wasn't enough. That's why uh, how I got into centaurs and and uh, and uh, asteroids and also I realized that there there's a hidden karmic layer in the chart but with everything else I was trying to go beyond the ordinary beyond what is visible and tangible and I try to understand the signs this, the signs are very important first of all you have a higher self which can be calculated by the way and uh, in this way we can tell how well you are acquainted with your higher self how much you are paying attention because your higher self is constantly screaming at you and sending you messages and dreams and premonitions and signs and if you have a good connection with your higher self you get constant messages you can you get constant uh, guidances uh, think about it as your guardian angel you do have a guardian angel you sometimes disregard her or him unfortunately but you, you should really pay attention and I have a very very good connection with my own high, uh, uh, higher self or guardian angel so I'm, I'm looking into things very sharply and and I think it's it's about raising your consciousness looking around loving the world you are in this is a very precious world and knowing that every moment is precious and unique and if you do any sort of esoteric science or you know these things then you can actually be aware of these facts and your life can be much better you can be a much better and much healthier and much happier person <laughs> I always seem to work this is funny I I'm very lucky because I don't need too much sleep in winter I need about five five six hours in the summer five hours is perfectly fine uh, I, I, I I start working around five or six o'clock because I'm very sharp in the in the morning and after my first coffee I I start uh, looking at the you know today's client and uh, tuning into uh, the various portions of his or her chart and then uh, I seem to be working all day. I'm writing articles, I'm taking phone calls, I'm preparing for my next reading, I'm, prepare, I'm writing an article, I'm, I'm done, I'm, I'm uh, preparing for my teaching. And so by uh, 7 or 8 o'clock, I'm usually quite tired. Uh, then I take a shower. And taking a shower is washing away the day literally and I this is something that I, I I think it's a brilliant idea so please try okay you can wash away the day's bad stuff um, worries um, uh, idiosities everything everything that really just bothered you just wash it away cleanse not just your physical body 
you know, water is a wonderful commodity to have, so use it until we have it. And then I usually uh, have a glass of wine, which is very important, spirit, uh, you know, I'm adding spirit to spirit. And then, then I read. My favorite pastime, my favorite um, um, way to chill out is reading and listening to music. And it's just classical music or metal. My, my uh, younger son does metal, so uh, I'm very. I feel very honored that uh, since the 13, I was listening to Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin and, and Metallica and Black Th Sabbath and things like that. And now my son is actually doing the same, the exact same music. So it's kind of kind of interesting. I uh, I think that it's uh, uh, family tradition is very important, and I can see that you know when, for instance. Uh, being a lawyer or being a doctor runs in the family. How one person can give it to the other person the knowledge, and it's a, it's a nice thing. But even with hobbies, it's it's simply great. And uh, I love people, so I love my friends. I I enjoy spending time with them, which is very important because as I get older, what I realized, my greatest gift that I can give to someone else is my full attention and my time, because. You know, I have less and less time, so I need to real. I need to make a, a decision who I'm going to spend my time with, and spending my time with my precious granddaughter is first and foremost, and then my friends and of course my family members that I love, uh, who I'm love. Um, usually, these are the things that I can wind down. Uh, at the moment. The, uh, the most important person in my life is my three-year-old granddaughter. She's very, very precious. I love her dearly. And she's, of course, very, the smartest, the most beautiful child on earth, of course. Um, and uh, I can see in her um, a lot of things, uh, little seeds that, can, that will be sprouting into a beautiful bouquet of flower. And what is really important is that uh, Luckily, she has very good parents who are looking at her as a little person, treating her as a completely separate adult, no, not like a baby who is someone's baby, but a, as a separate entity, as a separate little soul who has a purpose. And they try to accommodate that purpose, uh, which is brilliant. This is, I think, what we should do with everyone. Um, and to watch her grow up is going to be my greatest joy. Uh, and um, luckily, there's another coming on the way. Uh, we will have a little Leo coming in uh, um, in the middle of uh, August. So I'm looking forward to her, her as well. She's going to be a, a girl, a baby girl again. Mm -hmm.